Good evening. I'm just shivering. <laughs> thank you. Pastor, thank you for that announcement. <laughs> yes, Kitty must have been praying, I mean, so hard <laughs> this fast to get that much money. Really appreciate that so very much. God bless you. I talked to her earlier, and uh, so I can't ask her any more about power and all that. So she just... Usually she doesn't say that. She says, just shut up. <laughs> because she knows all the answer is uh, there is no power. And uh, this will be good news. Thank you. Thank you, church. Thank you for your love. Your love just, you know, overflow. And uh, we know that you love us. And we love you very much also. We pray for you. Our children love you. Thank you for the love you showed them. Yeah, I mean, we were talking with Yafet. He said, man, they love us. Baba, they love us, these people. <laughs> That's what he said. And I said, uh, yeah, when God is in it, and when it is a love from God, yeah, you can't change it. And uh, so good to see everyone, so good to see uh, Miss Cross and uh, the Ryans, and thank you for coming, and I appreciate it. it has been long since I saw you all. So I'm going to sign a song, a special, uh, about my name, Cry Holy. It's always a blessing to sing about heaven, and uh, just to see our loved ones who left us, and there will be a great reunion there. And uh, so I bow my knee and cry holy. I said, I want to. 
to show you some pictures I mean most of you have seen it and uh, for some who are new also that to see the uh, about the work in Zambia and uh, uh, so I, I, I'm going to show uh, this is our family uh, Kiddis maybe mo some of you don't know her uh, that's my wife her name is Kiddis we call her Kid and uh, our children Leah she is 21 and uh, she she's in college and uh, Yafet of course he's with us what a blessing that to be with him, and he's 19. And then Bunny, she is, we call her Bunny, her name is Bemnet, she's 14. She is in grade 9, and she is staying with her mom uh, in Zambia. And uh, next. And of course, this is our sending church, Faith Baptist Church, and uh, Pastor Campbell, our pastor, so, so loving and caring, and we were so blessed to have him. In Zambia and uh, really it's, it's just a blesses us and uh, it bless even our people to meet him to see him and preaching there just God used him while he was there and uh, he did preach on TV also where more than uh, I could say easily 30 40 million people watched it all over Africa and all over the world really and uh, so thank you pastor for coming and being with with us next and so of course, Zambia is a beautiful place. Uh, we always ask our pastor, I mean our members, church members, to come uh, uh, to do a mission trip, uh, to come with the young ones, and uh, even anybody to come and visit us. That would be wonderful. You have a ministry there to see, and again, at the same time also, there is a lot to see. I mean, I know this is a dry time now. Uh, probably no Victoria Fall as, is, as it is. Next. Uh, but we do have the big fives, these beautiful animals that we have. And this is Victoria Fall. When it is like this, it's just uh, an amazing, amazing God's creation. But right now, it's dry. Very dry. You don't even see a single drop there. So, which means just the, the drought is very, very bad. Uh, in fact, I mean, even elephants are just walking across like that on where the fall is. Next. Uh, so, Zambia has 21 million people. The capital is uh, 3.2 million. It's growing. It's big. Uh, the death population is over 25,000, and life expectancy is 61. Copper is the main economy. I mean, there is a lot of minerals in Zambia: copper, cobalt, uh, gemstone, diamond, anything that you name it. Zambia has it, and. Uh, just God use that for, you know, to develop that country. Just uh, keep praying with the new president. Next. And this is my wife, Kiddist. And in fact, I talked to her earlier. She said she sent her love to all of you and saying thank you for praying for us. And so she says, yeah, send my husband. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell her I told them. <laughs> she said, I want you to tell her. I say I will tell them. But I told her, no, they are keeping us so well, and uh, we do appreciate that. And uh, Kitty is uh, a blessing. Next. And she does uh, teach Sunday school. All our family signs. They know how to uh, sign, use sign language. Uh, all our children also. 
uh, because many, maybe some of you don't know that my mom is uh, deaf and sign language is her first language, I mean sign language is my first language uh, in Amharic sign language and then of course uh, we have different sign languages in Africa and uh, all over the world. Next. And uh, Leah also teaching the children in sign language who are deaf and the children ministry is growing. Uh, now there is another girl by the name of Hannah. She is taking care of our children there. She's also learning Hannah. Uh, her father is the one who gave us land to build the place and then they, they have been faithful uh, just in that ministry. Next. And, uh, but just as you know that the deaf are viewed in Zambia or in Africa just like subhuman, useless. They are like cursed from God. They are not respected. It's just as the case uh, all over Africa. Next. And uh, even their naming, they, they don't even name them. Uh, like this man, Balia, he was just named at the age when he's 21. I mean, the government wrote me that letter to say, please en enroll this boy to your school. And so you ask the name, he doesn't have a name. So they just have to give him right away. And I have named a lot of them, gave them name, blessings, and all that. And uh, even the birth dates, just we give them, whatever just we feel. Some of us, our own birthday, we give them, and so that we can remember to celebrate together. Next. And uh, this is Ngosa, 25 years old, just came to enroll in grade one. The grandmother brought him. He stays just one mile away from our place. It's just nobody cares whether he goes to school or not. And, uh, but just his grandmother heard and she brought him to that our school. Next. And uh, all what we want is to teach them to communicate, for the deaf to communicate, and uh, so that they will read their Bible so they can understand the Bible and they get saved. Because the deaf have souls also like anybody else. Uh, so that's all what we do. Uh, when these children when they come, they don't know that they have names, but Jesus knows their names. And uh, they don't know their mom has names. But they will learn to learn that Jesus is their Savior. They will know him, not just only his name, but he is their Savior. They will learn. Next. And uh, for that purpose, I mean, when we wanted to teach them about Bible or anything, they don't know. When you say Jesus, what is Jesus? They have no idea. So we have to start from a scratch. So that's why we opened the school. When we opened the school with two children, we, I say I will have only 20 uh, and I will have a good school. I will not compromise. And then in one week, the school was full with 20 children. I say, well, the next day, another mother brought one. And uh, she said, um, where would I take this one? I say, okay, I will compromise. Just this one, no more. And I compromise enough. Now we have 240 deaf students and uh, of course as you can see the name of the school is faith baptist community school after my own church here and uh, thank you for all the support that you are giving us and the children uh, so far we have a hundred percent pass in the great grade seven national exam our children are like a model in the country and so they are passing very very well uh, but after they pass grade 7, they have to go to grade 8 and they go to other schools which we don't have any control of. And uh, in most cases, they cannot proceed uh, because uh, some places they have to pay. Right now, the government is to start paying. They are saying that you know, they will have a, a, a free education. But still, they, have, they, want, they need to buy uniform. They need to buy this. And even that little thing that they can't afford... And so because of that, they just remain home. And uh, so we are praying. Uh, we are building an, another building uh, in Kanyama Place. Uh, there will be like four classrooms out there. So our prayer is just maybe to change that one from grade 8 to grade 12. So our children just transit from grade 7 to that one. That is just in prayer. Just you pray with us. Uh, the government is very happy to support the idea. And uh, we just pray that they will give us teachers and uh, also um, the, the needed finance for that too. Next. And uh, so our main goal is church planting. Uh, the Lord is blessing. We go to places, you know, door, you know, you say here uh, from house to house, we say heart to heart. <laughs> and uh, we do go to places and visit and to just uh, fetch this death uh, wherever that they are. Next. Uh, and... Uh, 
the Lord helped us. Uh, we have, these are just uh, old pictures, and, uh, but just almost every month, every two months, we, have, we are having new churches started. Even while I was here, I was telling the pastor that uh, one of our deaf uh, members that who was with us, uh, we trained him. He was teaching at our school. His name is David, uh, and uh, he was assigned by the government, and they gave him as a teacher, but he's already trained in Bible college with us and ordained to be a minister and all that. We prepared him. When the government sent him to uh, Senanga, he went there. He started uh, a deaf church right there, and so their first church service was last Sunday, and he sent me a lot of pictures. I did not put them there, but so we have the latest one in Senanga Baptist, uh, Deaf Baptist Church. And we have also Chinsali uh, Deaf Bible Baptist Church and Mbala Deaf Bible Baptist Church that have been added on to this one. So we're close to 30 deaf churches. Next. And uh, so the deaf get saved. They are the most joyous people. I mean, they praise God for what he does. I mean, when the deaf get saved, they go all the way to serve him. And they, you see love, how much they love God in that. And, uh, of course, we baptize them. And uh, before I said that, we always baptize them in the lake. And the lake, there are a lot of crocodiles. And uh, someone asked, how, you know, how do you baptize in the lake? Fast, so that, you know, you don't get attacked. But now we are baptizing them in our places. And uh, we praise God for that. Next. And also, the deaf are the best people to disciple themselves. You train them, they train others. And uh, with their own pace, and so they do that discipleship too. Next. And pastors training, uh, the Lord helped us to train over 32 deaf pastors. Uh, in fact, uh, in the past, even Pastor David Cross who used to come and stay like a, a, a week or two and uh, give lecture. When he does that, we did videotape that one. And then uh, what he taught about Revelation, about the seven churches, all those what he taught, we have them in the video. And so it continued even now, our, our, our deaf pastors are learning from that one, and that is a blessing. And uh, they are sent to serve wherever God sent them to be. Next. And also we do teach them vocational training. Just a little thing that what they learn to, to help them to self-sustain. That is, this one is a uh, handmade shoes, shoes that they just make by hand. It doesn't need a lot of capital, uh, but at least they can do that and survive because nobody hired the deaf to work for them. I have said it before many times that uh, I made a deal with a businessman to hire a deaf, refused, and then finally I agreed that let me pay for one month for the salary of that deaf. If he does a good job, you keep him. If not, fire him. And uh, that deaf went there, worked very hard. That man was so happy. And he said, hey, this deaf, he worked hard. When the siren goes off and uh, people just go for lunch, he kept working. He said, can you bring me five more? And I brought him and uh, just God blessed from then on. You know, our people being faithful, uh, even giving, and uh, just uh, God blesses uh, when you teach your people about giving and all of that. Next. And uh, then there, there is deaf awareness. We go to, uh, in our area, and the markets, everywhere that we hear, when we hear there are deaf people, we go there and witness. Some of the parents still live in the old ways. They want to keep their children. They want to hide them. We tell them, no, there is no bit. You don't need to be ashamed of those deaf children. You know, God loves them, and uh, they can be useful. I mean, they, they can be used in any way like anybody else. I mean, when you come to sport, the deaf are the best sport player. I mean, they can play any games, uh, in anything, work, whatever, the deaf can. The only difference is just that language. So like, for instance, I don't speak French. I am handicapped in French. I cannot communicate. So if you do have a sign language interpreter, the deaf are not handicapped anymore because they are con communicating. They are conversing, just like what we see. My sister is there getting all the information. So she is listening just like anybody else. So God created this beautiful sign language for the deaf to learn and to use. Next. And uh, we do have playtime for them. 
Uh, they are very creative. They just make their own uh, entertainment. And uh, so that's the TV. Then somebody stand there with the remote control and he control it. And that guy is there. He opens his mouth and talks just like TV, you know. And uh, so they do all kind of different things. And uh, they love that. And at times also, once in a year, we do have a, a jumping castle for the children because they see other places children play. So we want them to feel part of uh, the society, so they don't, I don't want them to miss things other places. So they come, they play, and they enjoy their time. Next. And we do, we do take them to the school tour, and uh, they, do, they do love that. Uh, I know, I mean, we don't have enough uh, big truck or something like that to load everyone. I mean, they, they used to be like 35, 40. I can pack them in my, my car, like your car is probably carry five people. Ours would be like 35, 40. And uh, we take them. And uh, so one time I took them. Of course, in the urinal, there were those uh, sanitizers, and they thought they were sweet. You know, the children took that one and then put them in their pockets, and, but nothing happened. Nobody ate anything. Uh, I, got, I got into it very fast. But that's how the, most of the exposures that they're missing, we want to teach them. And so that to bring them updated uh, in the civilized world, of course. Next. And uh, then we saw a lot of life changed. Uh, this is precious, went to school, our place, and finished also grade 12, went to college, became a teacher. She came uh, st uh, teaching at our place at Faith Baptist uh, Community School for the Deaf. And then there she found Nkandu, the same fellow that she went to school at our place. And I married them, and now they have three children. Uh, and they both, both of them, uh, God called them to, 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 to go to Mbala, and they went there, and they started church, and that's where uh, he's pastoring, and then that's where they are ministering. It just God used that small school and that small communication. Now these people, they go and open church and uh, serving the Lord. That was the whole point, that we wanted that school to be open. And Faith Baptist, you have done so much. And you have so much part in that. And thank you. Next. And now we have deaf uh, in the university and graduating in college and all that. Uh, and God is blessing that. Next. And also the Lord blessed. Uh, I, I do interpret and sign language uh, main news on the, on the national TV free of charge so that, you know, the deaf get uh, information. And uh, so the Lord blessed that one to use it as, as a tool. And one of the men, uh, Aaron, he saw that. He came uh, all the way to Lusaka. He walked three days, and uh, he got there, and uh, he said, I don't have a relative here, uh, so, but he said, I want you to train me, and so I can go there in Kasama and open a deaf church, which he did. We trained him for three years, and uh, he opened a church in Kasama. God is blessing that work also. Next. And the you deaf can also sing, you know. They can sign, they can praise God. And, Father, uh, I thank you. Uh, I mean, we have what Father, we call, we have you. a deaf church with a hearing ministry. Father, I mean, I most thank of the you. time you have a hearing church with a deaf ministry. You are my Lord. So that's what the interpretation you get when you Singing come to our place as a hearing person. Singing and, uh, hallelujah. Next. And uh, the Lord always use uh, any, anything like bicycles and all of that with pastors. They use that to place to two places. Uh, no fuel cost is, uh, I mean, no fuel is involved in there. And with the bicycles, they can get to, you know, even the deepest places. And uh, so thank you with all that help us so that you are helping us. Next. And uh, food. The deaf children, we do feed them. Uh, praise God also with all the support that we get. Uh, some churches also start sending us also with drum and drums like rice and beans. That way we feed our children. The very first thing the children tell us when they come to school, I'm hungry. The only food I ate is yesterday, what you fed us. And uh, so, but now, praise the Lord, we are able to feed them, you know, uh, uh, lunch with their own food and uh, rice and beans and whatever we get, we feed them. The deaf just enjoying that. Next, and for special days also, we do feed them something else. Uh, of course, please pray for us. Death is always there. Uh, our death, they get killed with a car accident. Our death, 
killed with, I mean, uh, cholera, HIV, AIDS, and uh, malaria. Uh, those are just uh, killers. So we need to reach them in the gospel. So they need to get saved. Uh, and, uh, you know, the deaf people only hear what someone purposely go there and tell them. They cannot hear just like anybody else from TV or radio or, you know, us, we just pass by, you can hear it. You are driving your car and you can hear it. It's, it's not like you planned it, but you hear it. Not with the deaf. With the deaf, someone has to go there to tell them deliberately. And um, God touch anyone to come to help, not only in Zambia, within America too, wherever God calls you, you can minister to the deaf. Next. Another one is abuse. Uh, this girl that was defiled and um, raped by her own uncle, uh, we reported to the police. Of course, you will be arrested like for two, three days, and then we'll be released. And then she doesn't, she, she, if that, that was reported, the uncle, he doesn't want her to come home. So she doesn't have any place to go to. So in most cases, the, deaf, I mean, the children will not say anything. They don't even know it is wrong. They come and tell us, when we teach about HIV AIDS and the causes and all of that, they say, oh, my uncle was doing this to me. Is that wrong? When we take them and have them tested, they find HIV AIDS, STI, and all of that. So we don't know how long that we will have these children, but I know God cares for them. And at least we can teach them the love of Jesus so that they can grow. Not everybody is monster. But there are places, there are people who love God and who love them and care for them. Next. And we praise God for the drums that come. Uh, there is an Amzam uh, company that send, I mean, I, I think only in Zambia that they do that. And, uh, but that has been a blessing. You know, uh, thank you for sending those uh, drums that you send us for Christmas. Uh, I, we never had that kind of Christmas at our place. Uh, all my children were... They were so happy, my wife, everybody. You catered for every one of us and plenty. Thank you. God bless you. And then next. And the drums, when whatever food comes, like special days, we, 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 we fix them. We have uh, chefs that are very well trained. And uh, whatever they get, they can cook. Just five-star meal. And so we did that, and uh, these are our graduates. They were, uh, they were enjoying. Uh, they loved it. Uh, I think the only time that they were ate, they ate like that when uh, the president of Zambia came and visited us one time. And uh, so they, that, that day, it was Chinese. They, <laughs> we told them, this is Chinese. And they were saying, how, how is Chinese? This is chicken. There's no Chinese here. <laughs> so, but they really enjoyed it. Next. And uh, we do, when they come in the morning now, we give them uh, food, they eat, uh, and uh, God is blessing with that. Next. And uh, whatever comes, like the bowls and all of that, they really enjoy that. Whatever they get, they play with it, and uh, so, just like anybody else. Uh, next. And of course, that you remember, this is a faith, uh, this is a uh, Chawama Deaf Bible Baptist Church, even pastor came and visited and uh, this was what they, they throw garbage in front of the church. It's just how the community think about the deafness, about the deaf people. And uh, next. And then since then, of course, we, we start, we cleaned it up. Next. And then uh, thank you for the help that you, you gave us. And we, it's, this place is now clean and uh, plastered. And uh, we have, I mean, even before the deaf were using it, uh, now they are using it even more. Next. So it is plastered, and we have doors and windows. Next. And uh, next. So we have the toilets also built, and uh, now we, we, we build all the wall fences. Next. And then put also the gates so that people just don't come and throw things as, as they wish. Uh, so I just wanted to show you so you have some things, uh, if you have some questions, and so we will have questions and answers. And uh, I, will, uh, I will make it open for that. So if you have any questions. And, uh, yes. 
Yes, Chawama is up and going at the church. Uh, the pastor there is Pastor Philip Mwanza. And uh, yes, the, the church is very much, very much happy. In fact, where it is at, uh, I mean, I, I took pastor there. He, he was there. And uh, it's like a ghetto there. It's just uh, a lot of drinking places. At, in the morning, like 8 o'clock, lots of drunks already there. And uh, so that is like a big mission field, uh, not only for the deaf, but even for the others. And these deaf are living in that community, and they are coming out of there and being trained and uh, taught in the gospel. And there, their life is changing, and they are also an instrument to others to be changed. So, yes, the church is going. Thank you. Yes, sir. The hearing people? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. In fact, yeah, the government is very supportive with that, and uh, the people that knows what, what we're doing is very supportive, especially the parents. And uh, those, uh, you know, the, the, those who are like guardians who are keeping this deaf, yes, they are very, very supportive. The only thing is there are some things that they are not even aware of. For example, one of our deaf students, uh, I don't have to mention his name, but he's, you know, he's uh, like a 10-year-old, and he was living with HIV AIDS. We didn't know, at, uh, I mean, at the school, and, but I mean, Peter, uh, I almost said his name. Uh, he is a happy boy. I mean, he loves to play and all of that. He never misses church. But lately, I mean, we start seeing, you know, pus on his hands, and we say, whoa. Uh, what's happening? So these are not good signs. And so I had called uh, his parents for, for them to come. And so the aunt was the one who came and she said, uh, no, his parents died of HIV AIDS. And uh, because they had HIV AIDS, they, they gave it the HIV AIDS to him too. And he, he has HIV AIDS. I said, you didn't tell us that. And uh, here he has passed and he's playing with other children. He can pass it to the others, you should have told us. I said, why didn't you take him to the hospital? Because I know the government have free medication that gives, because USAID gives fund, and government was just giving free for HIV AIDS patients. They give medicine and all of that. And then she said, no, I don't have money. I don't have 45 kwacha, then it's like $10. I don't have that money to buy. I said, no, it's not sold, it is for free. She said, no, every time I went there, I was asked. So I told her, okay, here it is. I give you the money, I gave her the money, and I told her, go there, ask them to give you the medicine. Once they give you the medicine, you already paid, you have got your medicine, and then after that, tell them, Pastor John needs a receipt. So that's exactly what she did. And then when she asked for that receipt, they gave her the money and they said, no, today it's for free, you take it. <laughs> so he almost died because of that. Yeah. And they are bad people, of course, everywhere. And uh, that kind of treatments are there. Uh, just also knowing these are deaf, they will not bring any problems or they cannot get us in problem and nobody will talk for them. You know, the other disability, they can talk for themselves. You know, if it is uh, visually impaired or blind, they can talk for themselves. They can argue for themselves. But with the deaf, you know, they have to use sign language interpreter or they have to know. They have to have those information. Uh, so there are people who help and there are people who do not help and they take advantage of. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, bicycles are there. Of course, there are Chinese bicycles, and uh, they are very much available. They cost about uh, $100 or so, but they are not that strong. In one week, they, they, they break uh, with the terrain that we have that side. And uh, so what they, they found out is there are second-hand bicycles, Japanese bicycles, you know, that I'm old, rusted, and all of that. But... All the other parts work, they just grease them and uh, 
they work for five years, I mean, five, six years, and so cost about $200. They are there, yes. They are there. And the pastors are using them. And so that's like not a one-time thing. You know, you buy now, five years, six years, they break, and that's it. And then they have to get another one. But at least those bicycles are stronger. And so we, we sorted to, to get them those when we have. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, we do have program like that. So we always encourage the parents to come and learn sign language. But like a still, the society, their mental, I mean, it has to be changed, that kind of mentality. You know, they do not need to learn uh, sign language. And uh, I mean, all over the world, the statistics shows that more than 95% of parents of the deaf don't know sign language. I mean, this, this, this is just all over. And that, in fact, when it comes to, Zam I mean, Africa and all that, the, the statistics would be even more than that. I mean, but as, as a school, as a, as a church, we do provide free sign language. Uh, uh, we, we, we give free sign language teaching. And some are the very serious. They come, they learn, and they help their children. Some are there 20 years. They did not learn. They do not want to help so but we do insist still for that reason the deaf thought you know their parents don't care that's why I said earlier they school start at 8 but they come at 06 uh, and the school finish at uh, 3 o'clock but they stay and uh, up to 6 and we are the one who told them go go home Uh, I think Catholics, yeah, Catholic is the biggest one, and then, uh, of course, Pentecostals are there also, and uh, Methodist Church, yes, uh, and Islam is coming also, even though that Zambia is declared as a Christian nation, yeah, but Islam is there also. Uh, I mean, from the past, I know uh, probably about 10 or 12 of them. And, uh, but since I came to this, this trip, there are some people that who are saying that they want to buy, you know, like five, six bicycles. And uh, I, we have not bought them yet. I'm not, I have not returned it yet. So I'm sure that it, will, it is sent to bio. And then, then I will know the actual uh, need of bicycles. Yeah, mostly it is a government. Uh, the hospitals are government. In fact, they just introduced what they call NIMA. That's like uh, uh, an insurance company, I mean, with the government. And so all the government workers and all of that are, they have to be a member of that and so that they can get that service. But there are also private clinics and all of that. I mean, it's, it, it is changing. It is, uh, I mean, mo modern hospitals are being built and uh, it is coming there. But, and uh, medicines are getting available now better than before. But no, of course not for everything. But yeah, it's much, much better than before. Yes. All right, Pastor. share with our church yes. um, let's get a pen and paper out church all right why don't you share with our church um, three things whether ministry or family that we can be praying with you about okay want a minute <laughs> yeah um, yes ministry uh, I'm praying for <clears throat> three more classrooms where we are now, uh, 
if we have those three more classrooms built within the property that we have, uh, then we will, you know, we will expand our students. Uh, I mean, we are, we are building another one in Kanyama. That's a bit far. In fact, the main reason we started that school was because some of the deaf come from that area and they don't have any means to come to where we are, where we first started the Matero school, I mean, where the Matero was. That's why we started the other one. But if we have three classrooms where we are right now, that will help. And uh, so, like I say, we will have from grade 9 to grade 12 there. And the other one just will be like a secondary school only. So that is one thing I want you to pray for us. Uh, the second thing about uh, uh, personal, I mean personal ministry, uh, I have a track, and uh, that track is now uh, over 240,000 miles on it. And it is uh, since 2007, I think it is... Uh, I don't know how many years that one has been. I mean, it's good, it's still going, but I want to try again, try to save so that uh, we can buy a better car and uh, so that I won't be stranded. But the car is still great, and um, I mean, I'm using it. Just pray for that so that I will start keep funding instead of asking one time because the price of a uh, vehicle is more expensive there than uh, here. And uh, so you pl please pray for that. And uh, also, please pray for my wife, Kitty. Uh, she has some medical issues, and uh, yeah, you please pray for her. She has had about two, three surgeries, and uh, so just please pray for her. That's good. Thanks, John. I love you. All right. God bless you. And well, is that... That gives you a picture of what's going on in Zambia, how you can pray for our missionaries. I, I think sometimes as Americans, we are, we are so out of touch with how most people in the world are living. Um, I love those pictures of the Chihuahua Church, don't you? To see how God has turned that around and uh, the doors and the, and the windows in and God just cleaned that up. When we were there in July and went to that church, um, it's a deaf church. But the hearing, after that church was over, the hearing just flocked to it. Um, and I, I thank the Lord for what is going on there. One of the things I really appreciate, and Johannes mentioned to you about uh, the, the pastor that has contacted since he's been in the States, and this new church has started. Um, just so you know, the, the government, this is started by a man who uh, graduated from college and is now a government teacher. So the government assigns these teachers to go to different places throughout the whole country of Zambia. The government is paying them to be there. And while they're there, they start a church. So these churches are all funded by the, by the Zambian government. So um, it's, a, it's a wonderful way that God is using the government money to expand the gospel throughout the deaf, uh, the deaf population of Zambia. And I'm so thankful Johannes is there and has impacted the deaf across that country um, through the Faith Baptist Community School for the Deaf, and it's growing, and um, let's keep praying for them, okay? Well, I hope it's been an encouragement to you tonight. Uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, uh, to talk with uh, Johannes and with Yafit. I'd like you to be praying for Yafit, um, starting his first year at Georgia Tech. Um, he's got a birthday coming up. He's going to be 20 here in October what, Yafit? October 9th be 20 years old, um, so wish him happy birthday before he leaves because he's not going to come back down here, and uh, maybe while he's at Georgia Tech, we'll get him to come up here and have some home time uh, so he's not down there by himself. We'll see what we can do with that, all right? We'll visit with them tonight for a few minutes. Keep in mind they have to get on the road, um, and don't, I say this every time we have a missionary like this come in, don't take all the time. There's other people besides you that want to talk to him, all right? But let them know. Let them know how much you're going to be praying for him. Take these three requests, would you, that, that he's mentioned tonight, and, um, and let's take those to the Lord and see how God, God answers prayer. Let's stand together. We'll be dismissed. Um, good to see all of you. Brother Dave, Ryan, would you, uh, would you close us out in prayer tonight? Do you mind doing that? Thanks for being here.
Amen. 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 God bless you, church.